Hi, it's Nancy. So a lot of you have been asking me about factoring problems. I know I've given you tips and tricks for factoring as if it could solve all your problems, but I realize that I left something out. Say you need to factor quadratic like this, x squared minus 16x plus 51. So what you need to find are two numbers that multiply to give you this last number, positive 51, and which also add to give you this second number, negative 16. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can jump to my introduction video, Factoring Quadratics. So first, think of all the numbers, all the pairs of numbers that would multiply to give you 51 and list them over here. So we could have 1 times 51 gives us 51, or flip both signs, two negatives multiplied to a positive. We could have 3 times 17 gives us 51, or negative 3, negative 17. Those are all our options. And now you just got to figure out which one of those pairs also adds to negative 16. So let's check them. These two would add to a large positive number, not negative. These two would add to negative 52, not negative 16. These would add to a positive. These would add to negative 20, not negative 16. Hmm. Actually, none of those add to negative 16. I actually don't know how to factor this one. This is embarrassing. I should probably just stop the video now. I'm kidding. It turns out sometimes the quadratic expression you're given cannot be factored. I don't think I ever mentioned this in my factoring quadratics video, that's why I'm telling you now. Because sometimes the instructions just say factor, and then a few of them can't be factored. I mean, if they're generous, they say factor, if it can be, if it cannot be, state so. If you're working on this and you can't find two numbers that multiply to what you want and add to what you want, it might be the case that it cannot be factored. It's unfactorable. Why do I say it might be the case? Because we're human. <laughs> Me too. I am human. <laughs> I mean that I also miss things. I miscalculate it. We don't see the factors or we miss finding the pair that adds to the right number because we're human. <laughs> because we make mistakes. It happens to me. Human error. It's probably best to assume that it can be factored when you start working on a problem because the odds are it can. But if you are, you know, doing your best, trying your darndest, you're just banging your head against the wall, I mean, it might not be factorable. <laughs> what about for a quadratic expression that has a larger leading coefficient term, like 2x squared, 3x squared? Can the magic x be used to factor any quadratic expression? <laughs> All right. So here's one with a leading coefficient larger than 1, 2x squared, 3x squared. So we can use the magic x shortcut method for factoring ones like that. As you can see, this one cannot be factored, spoiler alert, but I figured there's no surprising you at this point since the title of the video, the result of number one. But I wanted to show this to you because a lot of you have asked me about this. Does the magic x shortcut method work to factor any quadratic? Let's take a look at this one. When you have a quadratic with a leading coefficient greater than one, so 2x squared, 3x squared, etc., it is faster and easier to use the shortcut method for factoring, the magic x method for factoring. If you don't know that method, I explain how to do it in my factoring quadratics video at time 506. <laughs> the top number is the product of the leading coefficient first number times the constant at the end, negative 16. 3 times negative 16 is negative 48. And the bottom number in your x is the second term's coefficient, positive 4. And then at that point, you're looking for two numbers that multiply to the top number, negative 48, and add 4. At that point, it's a lot like the trial and error method for that step. You list out your factors that multiply to negative 48 and check which ones add to positive 4. None of these add to positive 4. So in this case, the magic x did not help you, <laughs> did not help you factor. 
Why? Because the problem could not be factored. Some of you asked me to confirm, does this ever happen? Yeah, here's an example. You're not going crazy if you come across something where you just can't get that method to work. A lot of you asked me if the magic X works for factoring all quadratics. And the answer is yes, if the quadratic is factorable. <laughs> If it's not factorable, no method's gonna help you. So I hope that helped you understand more about factoring problems. I know factoring is everyone's favorite. It's okay, you don't have to like math, but you can like my video. So if you did, please click like or subscribe.